Hello, welcome to Enoch's Engineering, I'm Alan. In today's video, we'll make a simple dial indicator holder out of some scrap steel and some brass. This holder fits into the tool post on the lathe. So let's go into the workshop, see how we made it. Fitted this fly cutter in the lathe chuck. It's a, a bar of steel that's been turned down, hole drilled about 45 degrees, and then it's been drilled and tapped there. And this just holds a piece of high speed steel which has been sharpened up, ready for cutting. And what I'm doing is milling this rough piece of steel. It's the end of a bar. You see where they've cut it off. And you can see it's bent. I'm going to try and, I only want six inches of this if that. I'm going to try and true it up in the tool holder as far as I can. Turn it round so I get the four sides machined. Chop it off to length and then we'll make a dial indicator holder out of this. The first thing I need to do is locate it in the tool post so that I can machine the one side square to the piece that's already been cut off. I'll put the dial indicator in the chuck and I'm just roughly clocking this up. It's about five there there. And it goes back to zero on that end. So I've got a dip in it of five there. So now I'll put the fly cutter in the chuck and we'll skim that face. the first face so I'll turn this round and then do the next face. I've put the face I've machined at the bottom and now I'm clocking up the tool holder parallel so I know this face will then be parallel. So that tool holder is about a tenth of a thou. So that's okay. Put the fly cutter back in the chuck. That's the second face. So what I'm doing when I take this out the tool holder, I'm just filing off the sharp edges and I'll turn it onto this face I've just machined to do the third face. There's the third side. So now I'm going to take the sharp edges off, put this side face down and mill the last side which is um, the side that was sawn off in the steel mill. the last side. And that's all the sides machined. It's squared up the end. Rough piece of steel. We've machined it down to that. I've just taken the sharp edges off with the file, machined up both faces. If uh, you've got a suds tray on your lathe and you've got one of these perforated metal sieves that stops the swarf going down the suds return, it's always awkward to get out by, by putting a little hook on the end. You can lift this out 
without getting your hands in all the swarf. And then by using your magnet on the end of the bar, you can go right down the, the pipe with this one and pick out any swarf that's in there. Next thing I need to do is drill a hole through bigger than this because I want to put a brass bush in. I know the diameter of the centre drill. I've got a feeler gauge. This is three thou. So I'm going to wind it in until I touch the feeler gauge and squash it between the centre drill and the job. Move it in 60 thou. Yep. Zero it there. That's put the centre of the centre drill on the edge of the job. Wind it in half an inch. And that should have put the centre drill on the line. Now I'm just going to repeat the same for this axis. Wind it out, turn the drill round so I'm on the diameter of the drill, lower it down, wind it in till I get a touch on that. There we go, clear out that. Lift it up, take it in 63th out, and then wind it in half the distance of that bar which is 520 the bar so that's 260 one two fifty sixty and that should have put that in the middle of the bar just centre drill that <laughs> It's drilling out 8mm. Now the problem I've got, if I drill this straight through, the drill will go into the vice jaws. So what I need to do is slacken the vice off, move the table across and reset it up so it's over the edge of the vice. Line it back up, carry, carry on drilling. It's a 10mm drill. That is a small piece of, uh, I think it's phosphor bronze. It was originally a valve guide for a cylinder head. That's just about big enough for what I want. So it's got another use. What I want to do is make 10mm diameter on the outside, 8mm bore, make a little bush. The dial indicator will fit in on this collar. Well, the next thing to do is drill a hole 8mm. Now I've got an 8mm reamer.
next thing is to drill a hole through here and thread it and split the bush. Okay, I've put my four jaw truck on. I'm just going to drill and tap a hole in the end. Just tap that 5mm. Now the bush needs to go in with the split opposite at 90 degrees to the screw so when the screw closes it clamps the bush. So I'll just use the vise to press that in. What I'm using is the the ream and now in a tap wrench and I'm just turning it around to go through just to trim it back up to 8mm. In the end there I've put a 5mm cap head you could put a grub screw and it grips the dial indicator okay. The good thing about doing it this way if you just use a cap head straight onto your dial indicator you end up um, damaging the bush on the end of the dial indicator and then this stops moving. So with that I can get in on my four jaw chuck take and also if I want to clock up the face there's two ways I could do it. I could just turn the tool round or I've turned the dial indicator completely around the other side, slacken this off, just turn the indicator around, tighten it up. That can then go in the tool post on this side. So then you can get into the face, just slacken that and you can turn the dial indicator. And there's the finished part from some scrap steel we've made the dial indicator holder that fits in the tool post there's the bush thanks for watching I hope you found that interesting and we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering.